everyone welcome back to my channel so i recently uploaded a vlog which was actually from a year ago from when we traveled montenegro and in that i talked about how i had all of this footage that i hadn't uploaded from some of our trips last year montenegro was one of them and then going to dubrovnik in croatia was another one we also went to miet which is a small island that croatia own like off the coast of croatia so apparently croatia own um, or have up to 500 um, islands. I think that's how many, it may be more though. So they have a lot of beautiful islands in Croatia that you can go to. What I'm gonna do is rather than doing two separate videos, I'm actually just gonna make one really super long video. So if you like travel content and you wanna feel super summery and see some beautiful locations in Croatia, this is the vlog for you. I'm gonna merge them both together. So in this vlog, I'm gonna be showing you what we got up to over I think it might have been two or three days in Dubrovnik, Croatia, and then also what we did for two days, again it could have been two or three days, in Mliet. I haven't finished looking over the footage so I'm going to go and do that now, and yeah, hopefully you're going to enjoy the vlog. A couple things to mention, we found Dubrovnik super super busy, and we were there like two weeks before peak season, so I cannot imagine how busy it would be in peak season. I would actually recommend trying, if you can, not to go during the summer period, because Dubrovnik is a really beautiful old town. It's actually been featured now in quite a few films, it's been featured in Game of Thrones, and it's just completely taken off so tourism season is very very busy i would recommend going in october sometime the peak season will be coming to an end the weather may be cooler it won't be proper summer weather but it should still be nice ish um kind of like some autumnal spring vibes that kind of temperature um although obviously not spring more autumn um but it was so busy and we were there pre-peak that's something to bear in mind if you do want to add dubrovnik to your travel list try and go october time we spoke to quite a few people who um you know worked in the old town and they said that was actually probably the time they would recommend going because everything starts to calm down if you go fully off season all of the restaurants and shops may be closed so i wouldn't recommend necessarily going in like january february time but any time between like march and late april could be nice and then october time could be nice this vlog footage that you're watching is from May 2018, so that's something to bear in mind. So if you see me and Alan, we may be looking a little bit different. Um, maybe not so much Alan, I now have a fringe. But I hope you guys enjoy this video nonetheless, even though it's a year old. And if you are planning a trip, maybe you'll be able to take something from it to help plan your trip and just kind of see whether it's somewhere you want to go or maybe it's somewhere you're going and it can kind of make you excited for it. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get straight into it. Here is to Dubrovnik. Whoops guys, I'm just editing and I wanted to say that we go to Miet first and then we go to Dubrovnik, so it's that way around, here is Miet. Welcome back to the next travel vlog, we've actually travelled today from Kotor in Montenegro through Dubrovnik to um, an island in Croatia, so we went from Montenegro to Croatia and we're now in an, on an island in Croatia called Miet. 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 Yeah. Alan always correcting my pronunciation. Um, if you've missed the other travel vlogs where we went to Split in Croatia, we went to um, where have we been? Mostar in Bosnia, then we went to Kotor in Montenegro. Now we're spending four days in Liet, which we're starting to think is like the world's best kept secret. It's amazing, we've heard so much good things. So, yeah, let's go explore Liet for the next four days. We've just got back to the apartment. And we're speaking with our Airbnb host and he said, um, I'm trying to get my swimsuit while I was talking to you guys. He said that it's much better rather than swimming there on the waterfront, it's much better just to go to the lake. And apparently in the next hour, there's gonna be no wind there. So the water will just be still. So we're quickly getting our swim wear, swim, swim, swimwear on and we're gonna go there. Literally not even a minute from our apartment is these stairs. And these lead to the little lake. It's a 0.4 kilometer walk to the lake. Oh, it's not that warm. Yeah, it's not that warm. I mean, it's not freezing, but whoa, it's really not that warm. It's crazy. We're about to head for dinner. I just want to tell you guys, because I don't think I've mentioned this previously, but because we're traveling through the Balkans to different countries within the Balkans, um, I just wanted to give you a tip. We're traveling by coach, which is super, super affordable. It's costing us around 20 pounds each time. And the coach journeys can vary from seven hours which we did from Mostar to 
uh, which is Bosnia basically to Montenegro it was a seven hour coach journey but it went so quick because the scenery was beautiful um, and then a three hour coach journey today which was from uh, Montenegro back to Croatia to Dubrovnik where we then got a boat here um, but I just wanted to tell you guys that you if you're going to travel by coach super affordable super easy to do but make sure you've got local currency change with you because they charge you to take your luggage with you um, it's like one euro or the equivalent so before you get on that bus before you get to the bus station make sure you know what the local currency is and then have change of that the equivalent of one euro because that's how much you have to pay for your luggage so there's a tip for you and now we're going for dinner do we need anything else have you got the keys this is how clear the water is here it's night time it's only lit by street lights and you can still see through it Alan's currently getting a shot with his camera with the water and the boats looks so nice that's crazy on camera it looks a lot lighter than it is i think i've got my settings up a bit we're on day two in Miliet. is that right Millet. oh my god i thought i had it yet yet it's very cloudy i mean we were expecting it to be really hot because yesterday was boiling but no the clouds have arrived so we were speaking to our Airbnb host and he, we were like, oh, it looks cloudy. He's like, oh, it's not going to rain today. So we're like, oh, that's good. But then he was like, but it's going to rain tomorrow. So there we go. We're going to um, rent some bikes from our Airbnb host now. Do you want to be in it, Alan? You're walking away. Cool. So we're going to rent some bikes. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to go cycle around the big lake. Yep, and then we'll see where the else we find. Yep. Just to give you guys an idea, this is a map of the island. And we're staying in Pomena, which is there. Can you point to it, Alan? There we are. So, huge island, staying in Pomena, really easy to get to from Dubrovnik. And then this is the lake we were swimming in last night, and this is the big lake that we want to cycle around today. So, the big lake, I guess it stops here, and then this becomes, this. I guess maybe that's a smaller lake, and then the sea. officially reached the big lake and this is like the least steady camera footage you'll ever see from me <laughs> but wow it's so beautiful we're going to a hiking route now okay I can't really cycle with no hands maybe you should be in charge of walking and the first part of our cycle route around this way we're gonna go around that way later we're gonna find a nice little lunch spot now just taking in the view taking some pictures and then we'll be on our way again Alan's made us some sandwiches to eat on this bench what's we look out at basically just nothing but nature i've got a better shot now to show you guys how clear the water is this is what it was like when we were swimming yesterday you can see straight through it how cool is this this flower looks like it's got a leaf on it but that's a green butterfly i think that's one of the yellow ones we like when its wings are open yeah. it's so pretty we made it to the top our airbnb host told us it was a 20 minute walk they think we've been hiking for over an hour very steeply we've done like over three kilometers basically from the bottom of there but you know what when you get to the viewpoint it's always worth it even though on the way up it might not feel like it so we realised that this amazing view isn't actually the top top. <laughs> Can you see Alan? There's a tiny little hut there. So we're heading up there. I was just there but I left all my stuff here so I thought I'd come back and get you guys so I can show you. How are you feeling Alan? I know, but look at this view. I love that there's a tiny hut here too. We're finally back in Pomona. Got our ice cream, which feels very well res 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 deserved. Thank you. Very well deserved after all of that activity today. Now we're gonna attempt to watch the sunset, but it definitely sets in this direction, but it's quite cloudy tonight, but this is still beautiful. 
it's nice to see the waves and this is just so relaxing this feels like a proper relaxing beach holiday even though we're doing activities it's really really nice and just to show you guys again look how clear this water is so we're listening to some 80s I mean, it's um, not maybe 80s, it's is it not is it just ex, old yeah, old ex Yugoslavian music yeah so nice cooking dinner this is the kind of thing we normally make when we're at home <laughs> So nothing new there, but the supermarket cheap is... Cheap and cheerful. Exactly, that's how we eat at home, cheap and cheerful. And the supermarket here is so expensive. So we've got a whole homemade vegetable pasta sauce, some spinach pasta. Alan is the best at cooking the perfect al dente pasta, so he's just seeing how that is now. And, I mean, you'd think we're in Italy, but oh well. It's kind of dark through there, but we're going to go on the balcony. It's actually raining, but our balcony has a little bit of a... Um, I'll show you a little bit of a, a roof. Yeah, one second. It has a bit of a roof, so we're shielded from the rain, which is nice. Yeah, it's not wet here at all. It's just gonna rain out there. And that is a side bit of the lake, which is beautiful. So we arrived in Dubrovnik today. We got a boat from a tiny island called Niet. We're staying in an apartment in an Airbnb outside of the old town because it's very expensive in Dubrovnik it's not like some other places we visited whilst exploring the Balkans the past two weeks it is very expensive here tourism is booming and um, has been for a few years now so yeah it's quite expensive our host from our last Airbnb actually told us that he lived in Dubrovnik for 18 years but he moved to Mliet the island because Dubrovnik got far too busy for him he said that a lot of people who have lived there their whole lives are now leaving because they're here all winter and it's quiet and they love it and then summer comes and there are like 500,000 people or something. He said a week coming through, I think he said, was it that many, Alan, or less? Yeah. 500,000 or 50,000? 50,000, 50, 500,000 would be a lot of people in that tiny town. Yeah, 50,000 people passing through and he said it's far too many for him, so he moved. Apparently a lot of people are moving. But our Airbnb has the most incredible view. I'm gonna show you this. This is the view outside the window from our Airbnb. And it is just stunning. That's the old town there. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, then King's Landing was inspired by um, Old Town Dubrovnik. We've made it to one of the bay areas where a lot of boats are here. You can see how clear the water is. Can you guys see that? Here, you can see the fish, there we go. It's so clear. And I think after walking around for about 10 minutes, we've decided that it's very big here and a walking tour is probably necessary. So I think we're gonna look for one to pay for and that will be our little tourist thing of the trip. First food stop of the trip is Pepinos for some ice cream. Also just look at this street view. It's hard to show you guys because I don't want to get other people's faces in and it is busy here. But tomorrow morning when we come back for a little early morning stroll, I'll, I'll be able to show you a lot more. Look at these flavours. There's a cute little market here selling a lot of lavender. And this has definitely been a common theme to each place we've stopped off the last two weeks. This um, little square is Poljana Gundulitseva. Hopefully that pronunciation is right. I've been practicing, so who knows? Um, I know some of you are from this region, so tell me if you think I said that right. Alan missed it, he's too involved with his ice cream. But yeah, they sell a lot of lavender, which is just so nice, because it means that when you're in a lot of the old towns, you get such a strong lavender scent. And I always love associating scent with places, so I think lavender is gonna be the scent of the trip, for sure. We've just booked a walking tour. It was 90 kuna each, which is about 10 pounds. 11 pounds. 11 pounds, <laughs> huge difference from 10 pounds. <laughs> um, so this is the company we've done it with. I'll let you guys know if it's good. So whilst we were buying the tickets for the tour, the walking tour, I was speaking to the guy who's serving them and he's from Dubrovnik. He looked quite young, maybe like 24, um, so early 20s. And he was telling me how like every year here it gets more expensive and it gets busier and it's really crazy to see. He said between May and September it's so busy, so expensive. And then within a day into October, like most of the things close, most restaurants close, all the people go and it's basically empty. He said it's so relaxing then and he said it's a lot more affordable too. He said that 
from October to like the end of April you can stay in Old Town for around 40 euros a night which is amazing because at the moment it, it's not even peak season like we're on the border of peak season and peak season starts in a couple weeks and it's already 150 euros for one night to stay in the Old Town so I definitely think that this is really enjoyable but 100% I would consider coming back in like October time or early spring put on a night jacket and just walk around there won't be much open I don't even know if many tourist things will be available but just to see it for a few days like that um, much more affordable as well I think would be really really nice oh also in case you're interested in Game of Thrones they, we, they were telling us about the Game of Thrones walking tour it does a mixture of showing the history of Dubrovnik Old Town and also where they filmed Game of Thrones and apparently for filming Game of Thrones they come here in the winter because it's still bright but there is no one on the streets okay the tour is ended 10 out of 10 would recommend and this is the information if you're interested and our tour was by Zrinka did I say it right? Zrinka? Zrinka. Zrinka. She was fantastic. So definitely going to be leaving a review and I would recommend you guys do this as well. That tour was so good. Really, really enjoyed it. I've just shown you guys the information. Um, so many things to remember to tell you. But the first thing I find really interesting is something we learned when we were in Split as well. And it's that in Croatia, the top floor of houses is where the kitchen is. Um, because if there's a fire it goes upwards and all you have to replace then is the roof and the top floor which is genius Ooh, that's so smart how do we not do that anywhere else and what's really interesting as well is I think that's throughout all of Croatia because Alan even said that his grandma's house had the kitchen on the top floor as well which is crazy so yeah I love facts like that and I love when we get facts like that around this region because Alan can tell me his side of it and his experience with it as well which is really interesting um, okay so this guy this statue here is for the soldier Orlando and apparently he helped a lot with different wars in the city so they made a like a monument of him really interesting actually is that because it's cracking here it's cracking on the outside and the inside they're going to be removing this and putting it into a museum and next year they're going to replace it maybe with a replica so it's quite cool that we get to see the original in the original place it was also just to let you know apparently he, this statue of him is a lot smaller than he was apparently he was a big guy and and we've learned definitely from this trip and we know Alan's six foot like Balkan men are tall and they're known for it. Apparently the tallest Balkan men are in Montenegro, but a Montenegrin told us that, so I don't know if he was biased. But apparently this guy, Orlando, had a 31.5 centimeter um, forearm. And everything that's been built in this city has been measured by Orlando's forearm. Elbow. Elbow. From his elbow to his fingertip. And apparently that's the measurement of the average Croatian man. So here we are in Dubrovnik's version of the Spanish Steps. Basically it's a replica of the Spanish Steps in Rome, but a smaller version because it's a smaller city, smaller space to put them. So they start from here and then go the whole way down. And these are the stairs I was saying about Game of Thrones being famous for, which I don't know, I'm a Game of Thrones fan, but I feel like there's so much more to the city than Game of Thrones, but in case you are a fan, there you go. <laughs> On our tour today we found out that Dubrovnik is named after, was it Dub? Dub, yeah. <laughs> Which oak. is oak, um, yeah. yeah, so that's where it gets its part of its name from. And up in the mountains here was full of oak trees and they would make boats of them and sell them for a lot of money. It's what gave Dubrovnik a lot of its first part of the wealth. Um, but there aren't any up there anymore because I guess they cut them all down, <laughs> sold them all, and apparently they just didn't grow back, which is kind of crazy. Maybe it just takes a really long time to grow an oak tree, I'm not sure. Let me know if you guys know in the comments, but it's interesting, always interesting finding things like that out. Also, the city is full with working water, so if you come here, no need to buy water. Um, it's very similar to Rome in that sense, and I think they had an Italian make the um, water system but all water from fountains is drinkable. It's a bit less busy now, so I can show you guys this. Apparently this is gonna, or it's a museum, but they currently got it closed until the 2nd of June um, for refurbishment society. I think it holds the city records. It's so beautiful. And then this building down here was a palace. Um, so that's where, I guess, 
like the king would have lived. And then we've got a bell tower at the top here. Apparently it rings, did she say it rings three minutes early? Yeah, three minutes after as well. Aha, uh -huh. so it rings at on the hour um, to tell you what time it is and then it rings three minutes after as well because apparently people from Dubrovnik are always late. So once it rings they know they've got three minutes to quickly go where they need to go before the bell rings again. And apparently locals from here um, will always meet under the bell tower as well. Another fact for you guys, there's only 800 people who are locals still living in Dubrovnik in this old town which they see as a city because it's so expensive now I think the real estate here does work the same way as London she said for like a square meter you're paying like 12,000 euros just for like one or two square meters so it is very very expensive to buy property here oh my god look how many birds there are that's crazy wow really really happening here especially with the birds but we're back at what was his name Ol Ol Orlando Orlando that's the one so we're gonna measure Alan's forearm so apparently here from here to here is how you measure for Orlando's forearm size which is what most of the city was gone on let's see so you start with your elbow there Alan no no here Where? right on there and then put your fingers out uh, you're a bit short a bit short apparently that's the average creation man's like forearm size. Quite big. But like it's really, they must be like six foot two. Yeah. Just to show you, here's the side of one of the um, old town walls, like the palace walls. You can actually go on top of them and walk the whole way around them. And the walls are the oldest part of the city that still stands. Just walking further around from the entrance to the pier, you get a really good view here of the kind of star shape of the um, ground walls that would have stopped cannons and things like that coming in. We learnt about the shape of them when we were in Split and how they have land in the middle of them so if anything does pierce through it won't break the wall. You can see the shape of them as we go around here. And then this is the other side of the wall that we're on currently. Just goes around this bend. The sky is so beautiful tonight. Just spending the start of our second morning in Dubrovnik admiring the view out the window. We've got a late start today, it's around 10 o'clock in the morning but tomorrow I think we're going to wake up early and have our little morning walk where it's empty in Old Town. It's so beautiful and I've just been thinking, I think this is probably one of the perfect holiday destinations for a week, two weeks because there's a lot of activities. You can go to different um, islands, you can canoe, you can just sit on the beach if that's your thing. I mean look at this beach, does that not look heavenly? It looks very relaxing, it's not even that full. It's still early-ish, but normally the, these beaches would be full by now, so that's quite good. If you wanted to go there, I guess you would just rent a sun lounger, and you can swim. And then in the evenings you can look around Old Town, you can do tours in the Old Town, you've got different excursions you can take. I feel like this is a really good holiday destination. Yesterday we learned that um, during the Yugoslavian war, a lot of... Dubrovnik was damaged because they were actually under siege for two years and they said that the, if you were just walking around Old Town you wouldn't really be able to tell but the difference is in the roofs here so you can see some of the roofs are like a bright orangey colour and then some of them are like a lighter pale terracotta the light coloured ones, there's really only a couple of them that you can see there but the light coloured ones are the original roofs and everything else which is bright coloured is a new roof. So the busy levels today are crazy, I have never seen so many people, I mean in two weeks this is like, it's like Leicester Square busy today, like you have to worth in between people, it's really hot as well. I honestly think if you're going to come peak season or even just before peak season in the daytime just go rent a sun lounger and lie there until the heat is gone um, because we're not really sure what to do with ourselves. Currently trying to find a water fountain, currently trying to decide if we should go on the sunset cruise which is quite expensive, it works out like £100 altogether so it's £50 each. Dinner's included which looks nice, the sunset cruise sounds amazing but I'm kind of just trying to decide whether or not we should do it. Yeah. So we've come to where our um, walking tour started yesterday just to get some water from these fountains um, but I wanted to tell you guys a bit about this church just here apparently this is one of the oldest churches in Old Town Dubrovnik 
and apparently they had like fear of death and there were quite bad um, earthquakes in like the 15th century and that's when this was built and so they looked at, they got architects in to look at where was the safest place to build a church and apparently this was the spot so they built a church there apparently there's been quite a few really serious earthquakes that destroyed a lot since then but this church has continued to stand and our tour guide was saying that if there's an earthquake by any way when we're here run and try and get in this church it only fits 30 people but it's the most stable spot in the city Alan and I just bought a fruit pot from the market stall it was 4 euros no, 40 kuna but how much does that translate to? 40 kuna? is that 5 pounds? 4 pounds 75 4 pounds 75, okay so I was thinking you know what it's expensive but it's full of fruit Oh, it's a bit dark, hold on. So I was thinking, yeah, it's expensive, but it looks pretty full. Move your hands so we can see the bottom, Ellen. That is ridiculous. So earlier when I was saying this is the perfect holiday destination, I think I'll just add on to that if you're very wealthy or if you have a lot of money to spend for a holiday. Because it is beautiful here, but it's so expensive that if you're like Alan and I and you like that budget travel, maybe just do a stop off here. I think the fact Stop off for a day. Yeah, like probably like one day, maybe even like one night and two days. Spend some money, enjoy it, know that this is your expensive stop off. If you have more money and you want to really indulge yourself, then come here for a week by all means. But there's definitely other places to go um, along the coast of Croatia. Or even like anywhere else along the coast of Balkan Islands, like Balkan land. That is incredible because this is obscene and like I'm a Londoner and I even think that's crazy also in terms of us complaining about the price of this it's annoying for us but we do understand it the locals here need to make as much money as possible during the summer because come October time there's no one here so they haven't got no but there's less people here like from what our tour guide was telling us yesterday it gets very very quiet during winter time so yeah it's completely understandable they're making their money's worth but my god are they making their money's worth just want to show you guys this as well look at the difference in roof color from here to the middle to the other side back to the middle definitely can see where's new probably the whole middle area of dubrovnik um, would have been affected in the siege for the two years in 1991 um, was it 1990 1991 she said yeah currently we're just sitting at the top of where the spanish steps are just had our lunch, we got a burek from Babbage, which was delicious. I got a spinach and cheese one, highly recommend. It was very yummy, really affordable. It was probably like two pounds, three pounds. Much affordable for here, so a good little lunch. Is it recording? Yep. So we're having a very chilled afternoon because it's so hot. We decided not to do the tour boat because, right? Money, money, money. Money, money, money. It's very expensive, although I'm sure it's beautiful. We did one in Split. Yeah, we only need to do two night uh, cruises in a trip, right? I mean, that's quite a luxury. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've been sitting here above where the Spanish steps are. We found some shade and we're just relaxing, but it's quite funny because a Game of Thrones tour was happening here and they had props and they were like pretending to sword fight. Very entertaining. Now we're going to head to Pepino. Is that what it was called? Yeah. Pepino for... for some ice cream. For... for um, Slado Slado Yeah. which is ice cream. Yeah. And I might get chocolate. Okay, good, let's go. So we've been walking through these back streets and just following the shade railing, we found some really gorgeous views. Just high up on the steps, you can see all of the other houses within Old Town. It's so nice here. I think maybe this is where locals live. This one's a little bit wider, so you can definitely get a good view there it's a little bit overexposed for you guys is that better oh look at that so it's just after six and now is the nice time so if you did come here maybe come into the old town around this time if you can avoid it I mean don't feel by any means you have to but when it's hot and it's crowded whoa not as enjoyable as it is now I'm just gonna say that although it's beautiful don't get me wrong but now like it's still busy but the whole old town is in shadow there's a nice cool breeze there's some music going on in a courtyard just through here there's a courtyard with some live music and there's bars there 
and yeah it's just really really pleasant beautiful as well so it's about 7 a.m we've made it out early ish normally like half five six is preferred about seven will do i reckon there's going to be some people down there taking uh, drinking some coffees but we'll see what it's like the whole old town is already beaming with sunlight so we'll see how these pictures go they might be very bright i'm really excited to go and see it a little bit less busy so we've just walked through the entrance um of i think it's is it the east gate well one of the gates <laughs> the less busy gate that's for sure and there are actually a few people here so it's definitely breakfast time probably coming early it would have worked but we could not wake up for the life of us these birds are flying around and it's beautiful even though there are some people out it's nowhere near as busy as when it gets to around 11 so that's definitely a positive and you can experience the city i think in a nicer way just to, for it to be a bit calmer um so currently so this here is one of the walls from the outside and then you've got buildings on the inside also something to mention about Dubrovnik um, I know earlier in the vlog I mentioned how this might be the perfect holiday destination because you can relax and you can come into the um, old town when you're ready just stopping because Alan's taking a picture that's a beautiful picture um, but it is very expensive here so that's something to note if you want to come and be prepared for it to be expensive um, I'm not sure how much sunbeds are to be honest with you but all tourist things, food, is very expensive here. Um, and I think one of the reasons for that is because it is so busy, so they can rack the prices up. But also, apparently during um, past summer, so from like mid-October onwards until April, apparently there is no one here. No tourists come, it's just empty. So I kind of feel like the locals are making their money just in six months of the year. So in terms of that, I think that's why they've hiked the prices up, but it's very expensive. Like we bought some fruit yesterday in Kuna and it translated literally like a pot of fruit translated to like five pounds. And it was like six grapes, a couple of cherries and a plum. <laughs> so not very much fruit at all for that price. Just walked into the main square. And yes, definitely less busy. Things are happening though. People are getting ready for the day. Um, also, whilst we're here, I can tell you guys that um, the man at the top of this church here is actually holding in his left hand a replica mould of the city, the old town city. Um, and apparently it's in his left hand because then it's close to his heart. So that's pretty cool. It's these back streets that definitely have all those beautiful vibes. It's nice when they're empty. I love these old doors as well. It's so cool. We're heading to the bakery now to get some pastries. Gonna get a barek. Did I say it right? Barek. Barek. Gonna get a barek from a pastry shop down this street. This is one of the little back streets. Um, if you guys have been to, if you come here, go to the ice cream place Pepino's and the pastry shop is on that same street. Um, there's another pastry place on the main street, but it's more expensive. Like a barek in there is 15 kuna, whereas the place we are going to now is 9 kuna. So, a bit of a difference there. Um, so, yeah, definitely recommend it. It tastes good. And you must go to Pepino's. We had the ice cream every day since we've been here and it does not disappoint. It's absolutely, it's like, it tastes like proper gelato. It's delicious. This woman's fishing and then feeding the cats. She's got three cats around her and she's just feeding them. It's so fun to watch. The cats look so happy when they get a fish. I didn't do an outro to this video and I may even look different than when I was starting the video because I have been editing this vlog for two months. Not like, it's not like, I mean it's hardly like an, an amazing edited vlog but for some reason I would get five minutes in, get distracted, do another video, do something else and so although we went on this trip a year ago it has now taken me basically like a year and two months to actually get around to edit it but I finally finished it oh my god it's a long one guys it's gonna be like a nearly 40 minute video depending on how long I ramble to you guys for so I'm gonna try to keep it really short and sweet 
Hopefully you got some tips about Dubrovnik and Miet and going to other places in Croatia in this video. If you are interested in travelling around the Balkans, in the description box I'm going to put um, a list of other places you can go to for a summer holiday in Croatia, as well as the other vlogs I've done around the Balkans. We've now been to Slovenia, Bosnia, Montenegro, we've been even other places in Croatia, so we've been to like Zagreb, which is the capital city, we've been to Split. So we are making our way around the Balkans, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Sorry it took so long for you to see it, uh, and I hope you don't mind that it's long. Do let me know in the comments if you like long videos like this though, because I can attempt to try and maybe make like another very long half an hour vlog, maybe like a half an hour long London vlog. Let me know if that's something you want to see, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!